Hello, welcome. This is Sports Tonight. We're broadcasting live from Channels TV Sports Center in Lagos, Nigeria. It's good to have you join us to talk sports. I'm Austin Okonakpan. Action from the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations. We get our attention tonight on the program. Nigerian football fans cannot explain. They don't understand it. It's difficult to tell the story of how the, their darling Super Eagles lost to the barrier of Madagascar. 2-0 in that final group B match. What are you talking about? So as it is, the Super Eagles likely to meet Ghana in the round of 16. We'll talk about that match, that 2-0 loss that the Super Eagles produced in their final group B match that ensured they finished as runner-up in group B. Football fans and followers in the country, they've been reacting to it. The Super Eagles players are also talking about it. I will talk about it on this show tonight and also give you an opportunity to talk about it. We'll talk about the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations. Meanwhile, more drama in the Nigeria Football Federation. There are reports that the Federal High Court in Abuja may have issued a bench warrant for the arrest of the NFF president with four other members of the executive committee, the Nigeria Football Federation, they have also reacted. We'll talk about it on the show tonight. What is the Nigerian Football Federation doing about that? And what is this get at? Because uh, we have a serious competition right there in Egypt. We need all of the attention on that competition. We'll talk about that one also on the show tonight. It's the drama outside the pitch. It should get us talking also. Table tennis, we get our attention. Uh, Belo, uh, she is the rising women's table tennis player in Nigeria. She won the National Women's Championship in Lagos. I'll also tell you the beautiful story of our four para table tennis players from Nigeria qualified for the 2020 Paralympics Games. We'll talk about it. Blessing Akagbari, she's still on fire. Remember, about two weeks ago, she won in Rabat, Morocco, the 100 meters at the Diamond League. She won the 200 meters over the weekend. Blessing Akagbari, can she keep the, fun, the, the, the fire burning? Because we're counting down to the IWF World Championship. I love this form. We'll try to get Blessing uh, to speak on this show. Casta Semenya also uh, ran a fastest time. Uh, in the 800 meters, but she's also threatening to pull out of the world championship because of the row with the IWF. We'll talk about athletics big time on this show tonight. What a story. The Wimbledon Tennis Championship started today. Don't call it Wimbledon. Call it upset tournament because Naomi Osaka out. Venus Williams out in round one. <laughs> Ah, uh, what a story. In this is our world of sports, impossible is nothing. We'll talk about that story. But Novak Djokovic is hoping to defend his Wimbledon tennis title. Uh, so let's see. Let's see what Novak Djokovic can do in the men's category. That's about the outlook of the show tonight. Sports tonight on your award-winning sports-loving channels, television, wherever you are in the world. Welcome on board. It's the Fun Factory. Are you following what's going on at the 2019 African Cup of Nations? No small teams again in African football. No. No, I don't want to hear that word minos anymore. No. Madagascar, they are ranked 108th in the world. They stunned. They, look, they didn't just beat the Super Eagles of Nigeria. They spanked them. They were brilliant. They were the better side from start to finish. How can you explain that? If you're a football fan in Nigeria, let's do this show together on this program tonight. Let's talk about that 2-0 loss to Madagascar. The Super Eagles, they, they were very flat. Yes, that's how I could describe them. Extremely flat. I didn't show purpose. They didn't look like that game meant something for them. By the way, they were chasing clean sheets record at the AFCON because they have never, they have never uh, gone through the group phase uh, without considering a goal. And they couldn't make that record against Madagascar. Talk to us on Twitter, channels underscore sports, Facebook, channels I think sports. You can send us an email, sports tonight at channels tv.com. What are you talking about? Are you following what's going on right there in Egypt? It's the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations. So much uh, talking points coming out of Alexandra. The Super Eagles, of course, are leading that discussion. Let's talk about it also. Twitter, channels underscore sports, Facebook, channels I think sports. All our top stories can be viewed on our website, channelstv.com, and on YouTube, for slash channels, web. Log on to m.channelstv.com. Download the Channels TV app for any of those devices that you see right there on your screen. I want you to be part of the show tonight. Let's make it engaging. Let's make it interesting. Let's, let's show our passion. Yes, that's what we should do. Bring out the passion. Do you love Blessing or Kagbari? I want to give you reasons to love her some more tonight. She's on fire. She's winning, and she's not looking back. As she won over the weekend... 
200 meters event uh, at the Diamond League meeting at Stanford. Two weeks ago, she won in Rabat's Morocco, the 100 meters from nowhere. She dashed off to the finish line. Well, loving blessing Akabari tonight. Let's talk about it. Nigerian para table tennis players. Interestingly, they're in Alexandra, same venue where the Super Eagles uh, played their group phase at the Cup of Nations. They went there. I told you about nine of them. Four have already booked places at the 2020 Paralympics. That's the power of sports. I'll make you feel it tonight on the program when I tell you that story. Also, I told you uh, that uh, it's not the Wimbledon Tennis Championship. It's the Upset Championship. Naomi Osaka, can you believe it? Venus Williams, can you also believe it? Out of the competition in round one. It just started today. That's it. Incredible. Action-packed all the sports. Welcome on board wherever you're in the world watching us. Uh, this is the Fun Factory. I want you to talk to us. Let's get ready. Let's talk some sports now. Uh, Uluwa Damiloju, that's why he loves to call him. So Uluwa Damiloju, Saliu, he's a sports journalist. He's with us in the studio. Damiloju, that Uluwa Damiloju, this guy. Damiloju, <laughs> good to have you on sports tonight. I'm really excited to be here, Austin. Yeah. I love how you've christened Wimbledon as the tournament of upsets. <laughs> I know. Former world number one out in the first wow. round. Who would have believed it? Former champion, Venus yeah. Williams, also out in the first round. What a story. I love it. So, uh, Sally will be doing uh, the show with us tonight. Welcome on board once again. Let me tell you this beautiful story of Nigerian sprinter blessed in Akagbari. She is back. Believe it or not, she is so back. Tell somebody that doesn't know that she's back to her best after winning a 200 meters race at the Diamond League meeting in Stanford. Akagbari clocked a time of 22.05 seconds to come ahead of uh, Elaine Thompson and Zina Asher Smith, who came second and third, respectively. She had also booked a place in the Tokyo 2020 Olympics at the Shanghai Diamond, Diamond League in May, uh, where she stomped an impressive season's best of 11.07 seconds to finish second in the 100 meters. Bless Nakagbari, who is now 30. We need to replace her so soon. He's now on course to compete at our fourth Olympics for Nigeria. Uh, Damn, this is beautiful. Amazing, amazing, amazing. The performance itself, blessing Okagbari, showing that at age 30, <laughs> age is just a number. We saw the race, um, she was in lane 8 against the likes of Ellen Thomas, where a lot of people expected so much from them. But blessing Okagbari, rolling back the years, she did it in Rabat, holding off Jose Maria Talu, she did it again right here. And it's really good news for Nigeria. Going into the World Championships, it shows that we're in the right vein of form, and this is wonderful from blessing Okagbari. Beautiful, we love it so much. We'll continue to monitor blessing of Kagbari and this new progress that she is making. It's good because we are looking forward to uh, IWF World Championship in Doha. And of course, the big one, the 2020 Olympics, she has already qualified and she'll be competing at her fourth Olympics. Come on, come on, Athletics Federation of Nigeria. We need to bring another blessing of Kagbari uh, because Time will come, she'll say, look, I can't, I can't run anymore for Nigeria. Blessing Akabari is big in Nigeria. In fact, in the world, Casta Semanya is also big in South Africa and the world athletics. 800 meters, no contest. But lately, it's not been about a performance on the tracks, but what she's contesting with the international body as regards our testing athletes that they believe have wonderful performance. Casta Semanya, she ran... A our ever fastest 800 meters in the United States at the Prefontaine Classic, as the South African as the South African Semania continues to challenge our new IWF testosterone rules that could affect her career. IWF said, "Look, no, 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 no. This is supernatural ability that this lady is showing." And so they went to court that, "Look, we are going to start testing persons that are overperforming." And look, when Costa Semenya lost that appeal at the Court of Arbitration for Sport, I thought it was end of the road. But no, Damilogy, she's, she's contesting it, but she's also still proving to them that, look, my ability is from above and I'll keep winning. We know she's not one to back down from a challenge. And even though the IWF and Costa Semenya have been having a lot of issues, I believe that this is the time for her to stand up. We saw that in the 800 meters. Not only is she running the races well, she's running them and she's putting in fastest times. It just shows that Costa Semenya is here to stay no matter what any of the authorities are doing I going know, forward. the double Olympic champion triumphantly finished the two-lap race in one minute, 55.70 seconds, 
and a sunny afternoon at Stanford University. That's Caster Samaria right there for you. She says, nobody will touch me. What I have was given to me from God. I, I, I'm, I'm doing so well because I'm blessed and I work so hard. And look, a lot of persons have looked at this from different angles. Is it because she's African? Is it because she's a woman? <laughs> but look, the IWF, they're not giving up. So let's wait and see where this appeal will go. Definitely. It looks like a story that is not going to go away anytime soon. And the interesting thing for me is, for those who say she has an unfair advantage, an undue advantage, look at the time she's run. She's yet to break the women's world record. So it shows that she's running in her own class. And if you say that she's not done enough or she's done way more than she, she should have done in the past, then we yeah. definitely need to take a look at the records yeah. and see that Castor Semaya is still running within her own league. That's what it is. She ran the fastest ever 800 meters a uh, record in the United States. She was the holder of the previous US, mm -hmm. US best record of 1 minute 55.92 seconds. She was the one that did it last year at uh, Eugene, Oregon. Meanwhile, Castor Semenya says she will not run at the World Championships. If she doesn't win, her appeal against the International Association of Athletics Federation as the IWF on their rules on testosterone. She said, if I lose that appeal, because after she lost her cast, she went on to the Swiss court to appeal that, look, no, it is wrong. They shouldn't touch us. They shouldn't test us because we are doing so well. Samaya insists a long-running case over testosterone levels in female athletes has destroyed her mentally and physically. But you're still winning, Caster. <laughs> you're still winning, and that's very important. The 800 meters world and Olympic champion claimed she has been crucified, but will never stop fighting against the IWF rules governing testosterone levels in female athletes. So, well, it's, it's pretty sensitive, and it's in courts. But Caster Semaya, she's not giving up. She said, if she doesn't win it, Damiloji, she said, it's over. I'm not running again. She's human. I think a lot of us need to understand uh, that even these celebrities, even these athletes are humans being, human beings first. She said something, and she said that they've been testing her. It feels like a guinea pig since 2008. experiment on her. I mean, you can't just say because someone is doing so well, they have to go for tests time and time again. I think for Casta now, she understands that this thing is likely not to go away, and she's trying to put steps in place just in case the IWF continue this. We might yeah. not be able to see Castor Semania in yeah. her beloved 800 meters but anymore. Castor says they've destroyed her mentally and physically. And Castor, you gave us a personal best over the weekend. <laughs> Don't go close, Castor. She will break all the records. Let's wait and see what will come out of that appeal. She took it to the Swiss Supreme Court. Now, look, um, I'm challenging these people. I lost that cast. I want to appeal that decision that they should test uh, female athletes with testosterone levels. So, so the IWF says, look, if you want to run, it's okay, but not 800 meters. If we're not testing you, you have to yeah. go to a, to a higher event, and, and Casta is saying no. So that's it. Uh, we'll continue to monitor that one. Let's uh, come back home, but we'll still stay with the women. Yes, it's women in sports tonight. Uh, what's the name? Fatima Bello. That's the name you should keep, Fatima Bello. Uh, she is the rising table tennis, a female table tennis player in Nigeria. You know Olumfuke or Shona Ike. She's a, she's a legend. Don't touch her. And what she has done. You know Edem of Young, you know Cecilia Otoakwan. Um, the lady that is backing us is Esther Oribami. She rising also, but Fatima Bello, that's her wearing the orange jersey right there. She is doing brilliant things. She fought her way into the final of the Made in National Women's Tennis Table Tennis Championship in Lagos, beating the likes of national player Cecilia Otoakwan, as well as returning Ghana to Aruno to set up a final clash with former junior champion Tostin Oribamishi. Tostin Oribamishi also deserves some respect. She's been doing so well with her table tennis and we've been following her. But it was Fatima Bello uh, that said, look, she won the trials. Showing the other guys that, look, from the trials, I can play table tennis. She went on. She sustained the momentum, came to the main championship, defeated Esther Oribamishi 4-0. Look, it was a blast. If you win 4-0 in table tennis, no contest, 11 7, 11 6, 11 8, 11 4. Uh, so, that would be what I say is we keep an eye on her. The Federation now, she must be busy uh, because she has shown her the signs that she wants to stay champion. Yes, yeah, she definitely has. She said it um, a while ago that she trained for this tournament for a whole two months prior to it, getting ready for something like this. And it just shows you that when you put preparation, even though 
quote unquote talent might not be as great as that of Esther. She was able to get that one four sets to love Austin. Wow. If you beat someone by four sets to love, it's no case of luck. You comprehensively dispatch yeah. the opponents. Yeah. And Oriba Miche, uh, well traveled, exposed, mm -hmm. been playing a lot of table tennis. I was no match for look at her right there, uh, Fatimo. Bell Bello, uh, you know, in a warm handshake with the president of the Nigeria Table Tennis Federation, Shia Tikon. We'll continue to monitor our progress. The Federation must also do uh, do their best to keep her winning. Uh, Bello, she has said she's determined to make uh, the Nigerian team to the 2019 All Africa Games in Morocco. That one is in August. So that will be important to keep her, her going. She says she wants to be part of it. So let's see uh, if, she's, if she speaks to the team. Uh, she can actually uh, keep the fire burning. So congratulations once again to Fatima Bello, uh, the winner of the maiden edition of the National Women's Table Tennis Singles Open Championships uh, that was concluded in Lagos over the weekend. That's for the able uh, body athletes. The para-athletes for table tennis, they are in Egypt, I told you. Uh, they left the country last week. What are they doing in Egypt? They are playing the para-table tennis championship that serves as qualifiers for the 2020 Paralympics, it's good news I have for you. Uh, Nigeria's participation in the table tennis event at Tokyo 2020 Paralympics is looking good. Four, four table tennis players have already booked their places at the Games. Victor Fariloye, he will be debuting at the Games for Nigeria after uh, stealing his place in the men's class eight after emerging champion at the tournament. That's beautiful. Victor, uh, take a bow. Well done. Also, Rio 26 Paralympian Ahmed Koleosho will return to the Games after emerging champion in the men's class three. So you see what those other guys are doing that we talk about. The para table tennis athletes, they can also do it. And this is a beautiful story because we're telling a story that when you're down, you cannot be out. If you've got sport, you'll feel the power, you can be a champion. Yeah, absolutely. Able athletes, para athletes. We know in the past that the para athletes have done so well for Nigeria. Ten table tennis is a sport where Nigeria do so well. So when you bring table tennis and para athletes, it's a marriage made in heaven. You get your red, you get your blue, your purple of the royalty is blooming from the night blue skies. That's right. So the other two athletes that will be representing uh, Nigeria, Sydney 2000 gold medalist, Tajuddin Agumbiade, I call him uh, a veteran in the sport, mm -hmm. but he still got it going in him. He will also be at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics after winning the men's class nine event. Ulufemi Alabi, also a Paralympian, will be returning uh, to the Olympics after winning 3-2 to win the men's class 10 and also booked his place, defeated South Africa's Tio Koji. So all the best. Congratulations to uh, the athletes that have qualified for the Olympics and to those that didn't qualify. We love you guys all the same. Thank you for letting us feel the power of sports, for telling us that impossible is nothing. It's a beautiful story. And while we're celebrating Nigerian para table tennis uh, players, at 41, this guy is making... Breaking records. Egypt's Mohamed Samahid uh, Saleh, he has become the first African para table tennis player to feature, to, that will feature in five Paralympic Games after the world number 11 avenged uh, a group loss uh, to Nigeria's Issa Ogukule in the final of the men's class four to secure the continental soul slot to Tokyo 2020. Paralympics from the group stage of the 2019 Africa Para Table Tennis Championships, holding in Egypt, uh, he lost 2-3 to the Nigerian. But Mohamed uh, Sameh, who is current African champion, knew that it would not be an easy ride to Tokyo. So he pushed and pushed and pushed, got the victory at 41. He will be going to uh, the Paralympic Games. Same right there on the wheelchair, uh, motivating us, inspiring us, telling us that look, you can do it. Feel the passion. Look at his face and know that, yes, when you're down, you cannot be out. So congratulations to Egypt's uh, Mohamed Sameh. Uh, mixed record as um, the first African para table tennis player that will feature in five Paralympic Games. Beautiful. Take a bow wherever you are. Sports tonight on China's television. Let's go on this break. When we come back, fasting your seatbelt, we are going to get into that discussion. What happens to the Super Eagles of Nigeria? How did they lose to Madagascar? We'll talk about it. Don't go anywhere. Stay.